Hi, I'm Marcus James Dixon with Gold Derby, and we are joined today by Monica Aldama, the coach of the Navarro College Cheer Team and the star of Netflix's docuseries Cheer. Uh, before we talk about the new season, can you tell us a little bit about how your life has changed over the past two years? Because this show is a worldwide phenomenon. Yes. Yeah, so we had no idea when we were filming this that it would be so big uh, because it is cheerleading. So cheerleading does have a stereotype, but um, so we weren't really prepared for what was to come. Our life kind of went from zero to a hundred really fast. Um, so we were just taking it all in. All of these wonderful opportunities came our way, but obviously with something this big comes then some devastating things as well. So the past two years have been, um, if you've watched season two, it was a lots of ups and downs and difficult times. And, um, you know, I, the good thing about living in a small town in Texas is that my day-to-day -day life doesn't, doesn't feel very different. I still feel very normal and the same. And uh, I still get up every day and go to Navarro college and coach. Um, but outside of that little bubble is very different. And, you know, we're just, you know, taking every day as, as it comes and seeing what comes at us. Well, at Gold Derby, we're huge awards nerds. And I want, I have to bring up that season one of Cheer won three Emmys, unstructured reality program, directing and editing. Um, what was that moment like for you and your team when you found out that you had been, you had won all these trophies? Well, we love trophies, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you know, I think the thing about a trophy, it's never about, you know, the, the medal or the actual little, the trophy that you get. It's about the acknowledgement of all the wonderful things that you've done. So obviously it's a great feeling. That's we, that's what we do in cheerleading. We put our bodies through a lot of, you know, um, high intensity stuff. We dedicate a lot of our time for that. And it's not for some trophy. It's for that feeling of success and uh, being able to accomplish something. So um, we were very grateful for uh, those Emmy nominations and those wins. And I thought it was just a, great way of um you know honoring the work that was put into it on the other side the team that actually edited the show and the creativity and um they were they just told our story so well I was just so grateful to have them and if I remember right that that ceremony was the creative arts Emmys it was kind of virtual so you didn't get to go is that right did did you ever get to hold one in your hand at least no not yet yeah. Maybe this year? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's in person this year. If I Yeah, that would correctly. be amazing. Um, well, in between the first and second seasons, there was the scandal regarding one of the students, Jerry. Uh, I'm curious, was there ever a discussion about whether the show should address the controversy, which you, you did, or was there a discussion maybe just forge ahead and just focus on the cheer team? Um, you know, I think that's probably a great question for Greg Whiteley, who is the creator of the show. And I know we had already obviously started filming season two when the pandemic hit and everything got canceled. And then uh, before we even started back up filming the next season, which was all, all, also a part of season two, um, you know, the Jerry Harris news broke. And I think it was probably because it is a docuseries, it is to tell a tell our story and you don't really want to hide anything that was a part of the journey that we were on as devastating as it was for us I don't think there was ever once again it's a really a question for Greg but I don't think there was ever a question of not uh covering that you know story and I think probably the biggest thing is how do they how do they cover it uh without you know or to tell the everybody's story as gently but honestly as possible um, and I think they did a great job of doing that, um, as you know, as best you could under the circumstances. Uh, and you mentioned COVID and in, in the fourth episode, we see how COVID impacted you guys in 2020, the cancellation of the tournament in Daytona. Um, that was two years ago, looking back at that moment, would you say that was like one of the most disappointing moments you've ever had as a coach to have that canceled? Of course. I mean, we were so close to actually going. We were only a few weeks out and we were, um, you know, it, we were in a whirlwind, you know, the show had come out and we suddenly had all this attention put on us and all these people wanting to do interviews and stuff. So there was a lot of speculation in the media that 
you know, we weren't going to be focused, that we weren't going to win because we were distracted with doing interviews and stuff. So honestly, we, we were determined to work twice as hard. We had put in so many hours um, and we were actually on spring break, which is where we, we call it hell week because we put in so many hours and we had just finished that up and uh, feeling so good about competition. Um, we had done 25 full outs. We could have competed right then if we needed to. And then um, every, we were, you know, we were like, surely this isn't going to affect us. You know, we were so naive for a few days and then it all spiraled out of control so fast. It was, it was, I, I've never experienced anything like that. The sadness um, of the kids, you know, we, we came back and met the school was nobody came back from, from spring break because they weren't allowed to, we had gone online and shut down, but we were still there. So we came back and met and turned in uniforms and it was a very, very sad day. Um, and, you know, I never saw some of those kids again. I've not seen them oh. since that day of turning in uniforms and we went into a pandemic and then, you know, life continued on. So it's not the way that anybody would want to end a season where you've worked so hard. And, you know, with cheerleading, we put in all this time on the front end to support other teams. And that second part of the semester is for us. And that's what got taken away. We'd put in all this time for the year. And uh, yeah, it was definitely uh, one of the most challenging, I think what was to come after that was certainly as challenging as well, but, uh, the past two years have been some of the most difficult times as a coach that I've experienced. Um, speaking about the, the whole whirlwind of that moment, you're also going to dancing with the stars around the same time. So you have dancing with the stars, uh, Jerry's story coming out and then COVID that must've just been a huge shock to the system. Like you're happy, you're sad, you're disappointed. You're what was that? that time like in your life yeah I mean like you said it, it's so many emotions we were on such a high after the show came out you know we'd gotten to go to the Ellen show and perform and uh, some of us went to New York and we had all these great opportunities and we were working so hard and we looked so good and then the season got canceled but I think all of us you know once we had let that settle in we were like okay we're in this pandemic let's just take what has come to us and, and move forward and then, of course, I got off, you know, asked to go on Dancing with the Stars. And that was a dream come true for me because I was such a huge fan and, and did that. And then the devastating news about Jerry, it, it's just like we couldn't get out of this weird cycle of ups and downs. And, and then coaching through a pandemic, that's an, a whole nother topic that we don't even have time for <laughs> because it was so difficult because the, the rules were so, uh, you know, stringent you had if anyone didn't feel well then you're in and out of quarantine and it was just something that I really I'm, I'm hoping that's behind us and that you know we don't ever have to experience that again mm -hmm. um can you talk about what it means to have so many people look up to you to be inspired by you I'm thinking in particular there's two little girls and I think it was episode six they run up to you they get your autograph they get your photos and then they like high five we just met Monica what, what are moments like that like when, when you experience those? Well, you know, I have always prided myself on being a good role model for my team. And I've, I've um, you know, lived my life and my personal life the way that I would expect them to live there. So I've always prided myself on that. And uh, in our little community of cheer, I've always tried to be that role model. It's just now on a much bigger scale. And, um, you know, I've won enough trophies. I do this I continue to put the time and effort into this for other reasons. And it's, you know, for touching the lives, mostly of the athletes that I coach that because they are like family to me, but also if I can just inspire anybody, uh, you know, to push through the bad times or to work hard to be successful or any of those things just to make their dreams come true. That's, it's such a great feeling that that's what I continue to, you know, put my time into this sport for. Um, for our final question, I'm kind of curious, you, you mentioned this earlier, what are some of the misconceptions people have about cheerleading and cheer teams that you'd like to address or, or clear up? Well, I'm hoping that those of, you know, the people that have seen cheer kind of have a new outlook on it. But before that, I think, you know, the shows like bring it on and stuff, make it look like cheerleaders are, you know, some mean, mean, popular girls that just want to look cute and, and they, you know, even outside of that, a lot of times you only get to see cheerleading on the sidelines of, you know, a football game or something like that. And although we do that, and that is something that I actually love, I love game day cheerleading 
it's not competitive cheerleading and that's a whole new level. It's very athletic. And um, so we, we were hoping that all I wanted to do was tell our story of these incredible athletes that work so hard. And I'm hoping that, and I do think, I don't even hope, I know because I've been told, I've gotten the DMs, I've gotten the messages of people who said, I had no idea that cheerleading was this. I had no idea how athletic, I had no idea how hard and, and the work that's put in. And thank you for educating us. And uh, even in the cheer communities, people that have reached out and just said, thank you for educating uh, the people of the world, because now they understand what we do. So hopefully those misconceptions of old school cheerleading, where it's a popularity contest is kind of, you know, in, in, that's history. And people really understand what these kids are committing to and putting, putting themselves into. Awesome. Thank you so much, Monica. We will see you in a little bit in the big group uh, panel session. Thank you.